1738, the 3rd of February. The young man is on a ship, being gently rocked back and forth to comfort his failure. This young man is one of the most well-known theologians in our current day. And while this is the case, many do not know, however, that before he could become that, today in history would prove him a failure. This is the In History Show on the Semper Informanda podcast. I'm your host, Cody Bachelkamp. John Wesley was born June 17, 1703, in England. He became an ordained deacon in 1725 and later an ordained priest in 1728. He would join and later become the leader of the Holy Club in Oxford, where he would meet another later famous theologian, George Whitfield. Wesley's desire for the gospel overflowed, resulting in him becoming a missionary of the, quote, Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in the Foreign Parts. Those foreign parts were the recently discovered Americas. And so, both he and his brother took the two-month boat trip over to Georgia. For Wesley had great dreams and visions of the gospel taking hold in a new land. So big were those visions that his church was not only meant for the English settlers, but also for the native tribes of Georgia. These visions of unity and gospel impact filled and motivated Wesley. These visions, however, would prove to be stomped out, as Wesley would become entangled in the politics of the area through an attempted relationship of Sophia Hopke. The issue came when the relationship went south, because Sophia's father was the chief magistrate and was well known for corruption. The fallout was great, probably as great as the impact Wesley would thought he would have, except in the opposite way. Because when the relationship soured, Wesley took the advice of some of the Moravian elders and he cut ties. But he would later then refuse to give her the sacrament, an act that marred her reputation in the community. This resulted in a warrant being issued for defamation. And after the court proceedings, Wesley's standing in the community was crushed, causing him to leave, failing his big dreams. And today in history, he sailed back home. How do we process stories like this? Stories of big visions leading to failure. I think the first answer lies in what we hold as the standard. And also, when do you stop measuring? Is the standard of success how closely the end result looks like to the vision in your head? Or is success measured in faithfulness to God's word? Because even in these measures, it would seem Wesley failed. But also, when do you stop measuring? When is the journey over? When have all the lessons been learned and it's time to get your score for the assessment? God often doesn't work how we think he does. Many times, we think we are the ones teaching the people and ministering to them, when it is really us who's being taught. And the things that we would view as failure is just another teaching moment from the Lord to, even in those failures, mold us more into the image of Christ. I say all of this because after returning to England, Wesley would have what many referred to as an evangelical conversion, causing him to leave the Moravian Christians. It was at this moment that Wesley would begin traveling as an itinerant preacher, speaking outdoors and 
starting small groups dedicated and committed to discipleship and accountability. Then, Wesley would lead the charge towards social issues like prison reform and the abolition of slavery. Once a pastoral failure in Georgia, Wesley would become a well-known itinerant preacher, abolitionist, and theologian. Wesley had such an impact that his later theology is known today as Wesleyan theology, and it continues to guide many Methodist churches today. Once, the most hated man in Georgia, by the end of his life, he was referred to as the best loved man in England. This episode of the Semper Reformanda podcast was written and produced by me. Special thanks to Josh Caval for the music. Thanks. We'll see you next time.